preached on the title, Your, Your Window of Opportunity. I truly believe that Elkhorn Baptist Church is at a window of opportunity. And listen to me. We will never get the same opportunity ever again. Once today is gone, it's gone. You will never get the opportunity that you're getting right now. We will never, ever get the same opportunity again like we're having right now. That's why it's so very important for me to give you this word today. I, I want to give you a now word, and I want you to get deep in your spirit. I say spirit a lot because of this. I am a spirit. I have a soul, but I live in a body. And it's the same way with you. You are a spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's now or never. It's now or never. Now, I want this word to get into your heart. The first Samuel chapter 19 is where I'm taking my text from. Two verses. First Samuel chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. Your window of opportunity. Verse 11, chapter 19 of First Samuel says these words. Are you ready to say amen? If not, it's on the big Bible on the big screen. It says, Saul sent men to David's house to watch it. Watch these next words and to kill him in the morning. Saul was a mean man. But listen to me. He sent messengers. He sent his army to watch over King David's house, and in the morning he was going to die. He was going to kill him. Saul was going to kill David. It says, but Michael, David's wife, <laughs> people say, well, I thought Bathsheba was David's wife. That's why God says in the New Testament, have one wife at a time. Have y'all not noticed that handling one wife at a time is a full-time job? We don't need 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's why God said in the New Testament, hey, let me give you a, a, a good word. One wife at a time. And you take care of little mama, and I promise you, that's a full-time job. Amen? Come on, men. Don't cower down on me. It's the truth. I'm going to help the women out here in just a moment, too. Amen. But here's the thing, yeah, Dana's looking at me like, get him, get him. But that's why, watch this. David's wife, he, she warned him. And thank God we've got wives in our life that my wife will look at me sometimes and warn me, be careful what's ahead of you. Be careful where you go. She warns me. Thank God for Holy Spirit-filled women of God that will talk to their husbands and say, don't do that. Watch what she said. She warned him. If you don't run... For your life tonight, tomorrow, you will be dead. You'll be killed. It's on like Donkey Kong. You know what I'm saying? Verse 12. So Michael let David, look what she, look what she did. Down through a window. This was his window of opportunity. This was his chance that if he was going to escape and save his life, this was his window of opportunity. He fled and he escaped. Michael said, if you don't do something now, watch this church, you'll miss it. You'll miss your opportunity. Timing, watch me, is everything. Timing is everything. Listen, you can miss your destiny. You can miss your opportunity. But what God spoke into my, my heart was when Jesus was talking to Peter in the Bible. He looked at Peter was fishing, and God or Jesus walked by, and it says that he was he kept walking. He kept walking. He looked back and see Peter. Hey, Peter, follow me. Follow me. That's all he said. Two little words. Follow me. And all of a sudden, I can see Jesus just turn back around, and I can see him say, "Are you coming or not? Are you coming or not? How many times has God said, Hey, Elkhorn, are you follow me?" Hey, man of God, follow me. Woman of God, follow me. And I can see Jesus walking and keep walking and turn around and say, Hey, Elkhorn, are you coming? Hey, man of God, are you coming? Woman of God, are you coming? It's important we follow God. Michael said these words, It's now or never. Because if you don't do something now, if you don't do something tonight, you'll be dead when it comes in the morning. That's a powerful word, but I'm going to tell you something. They had no time to waste because Saul and his assassins were coming, and they knocked on the door, and they were looking for David. And Michael, his wife, said these words, 
I'm going to open a window for you, and I want you to go through that window, and I want you to run for your life with all that you got. Because if you read before these verses, Saul took a spear, took a spear in his hand, and he said, David, I want to kill you so bad, I'm going to take my spear, and I'm going to pin you up against the wall. Old Testament was not a joke. Thank God we're living in grace. Thank God we're living in a New Testament day and time that Jesus Christ showed us grace. Listen to me. If the windows of heaven, i, I got to set this stage for you. If the windows of heaven are ever going to be opened up, powerful statement, it's not dependent upon God. It's dependent upon you. Listen to me. It's dependent upon you. Dependent upon you. The question is, how many of you guys want an open window or a closed window? The question is, are you willing to really sacrifice and say, God, I'm going to follow you, and no matter what cost, I'll lay it down, I'll die for you, I'll pick up my cross today, and I'll follow you no matter what the cost is. That's why in Luke chapter 9, it says these words, you better count the cost before you say, I'll go. You better count the cost. Elkhorn, we better count the cost before we say, God, I'll follow you. Wherever. No matter where you want to take me, I'll follow you. Be careful when you say that because God will look back and say, are you coming or not? Are you coming or not? God put this word on my heart. Anytime God does something big, extreme in your life, two things are going to happen. Two things are going to happen. Y'all ready? Number one, you'll have a window of opportunity. You will have an opportunity to score a touchdown. You will have an opportunity to bless somebody. You will have an open window in your life. Or number two, you'll have voices at your door. Listen to me. Listen to me. We've got too many churches that are hearing the voice of fear at the door and not doing anything about it. We've got too many Christians that are listening to the voice of fear at the door. I would not be standing here today as your pastor if I would have listened to that voice called fear at my door. Because I had too many things up against me. But one thing I found out, if God be for me, it don't really matter who's against me. Because God will open a window and a door, and he'll push you through. He sure will. And I know some of you right now are hearing a voice of fear knocking at your door. You can't do it. You're not smart enough. You're, you don't have enough degrees hanging on your wall. You, you just can't do it. You're, you're just like your daddy. You'll never be nothing in your life. You've messed up too much. God can't forgive that. But I've got news for you today. You're already forgiven if you're a child of God. You've already got an open window in your life. And God said, if I be for you, it don't matter who's against you. And greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. And God's wanting to open a door in your life and bless you. But so many people are listening to the wrong voice. I'm going to say that again. So many people are listening to the wrong voice. You've got God standing, standing in heaven going, you know what? You can do it. I've got you. I won't hurt you. I won't let you down. And all of a sudden, you've got a fear moment right now in your life. We're out of debt. Our next steps is to build a thousand-seat sanctuary. And boy, I've got a lot of little voices at my door right now. Said they're going, preacher, you're going to get them in a mess. Preacher, what about this? And preacher, what about that? And i got to square him up this morning and say, hey, hey, that's not what God said about me. God's for me. He's building me up. He's going to open a window for me. He's going to bless me and get me through that open window. Amen. How many of y'all believe that this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. we got to quit looking at that window. And there's got to come a time in your life, man of God, woman of God, and youth of God, that you step in soon in, on that window, you step on it, you get through it. you got to get through that window. you got to get through that window. Because I guarantee you right now, there's a lot of people under my teaching right now that's hearing the voice of the enemy louder than they're hearing the open window of God. See, here's the deal. If Satan can stop you from getting through that window, he'll rob you of your blessing. He'll rob you of your blessing. So you got to step through it. Listen to this. The first time Bible, the Bible talks about an open window. It's in Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. Let me read it. So you take note of this. And go back and study it out, okay? The first time windows are mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 11:7. 7. 
Listen to this. The same day were all the fountains. Everybody say fountains. Yeah. Of the great deep broken up. Everybody say broken up. And the windows of heaven were opened. Watch this. Here's a good Bible lesson one-on-one for you and I today. The fountain of the deep is the earth. The fountain of the deep is me and you. God said these words. When I see a brokenness, hallelujah, when I see a people that is broken on earth, then I will open the windows of heaven. The problem today is we got too many prideful people standing up, and they're not humbling themselves before the Lord. Could it possibly be the reason why a lot of churches, a lot of Christians are not getting that open window of blessing is because they're not, they're not broken. they got to have it their way. Burger King lied once again. You cannot have it your way. But what God says that I'm looking for, I'm looking for a church that will fall on their knees and be broken before me so I can fill them up and open the windows of heaven and pour down my blessings upon them. Y'all want the biggest secret I could ever give you? Here's, here's what happens. Your brokenness equals God's blessing. Your brokenness, your humbleness, you get down and being a foot washer. I preach this until I'm red in the face, and I'll preach it some more until y'all bury me. The problem with people today is they're not broken. God says, when I look down from heaven and I've seen a broken earth, a broken people, a humble people that have broken themselves. God says, then I open heaven's window, and then I pour my blessing upon them. Y'all getting this today? Y'all want y'all to get this today? Listen to me. You got to get this today. You have to get this in your spirit. The windows of heaven will never be open until there's a brokenness on earth. Y'all listen to me. The windows of heaven will never be opened up. So many people, watch me, too many, I can preach that baby. So many people are too satisfied. They've got all they want. They're not broken enough. They've not humbled themselves enough. And they'll never see the presence of God until they break themselves. When you break yourself in the potter, hallelujah, come the Holy Ghost can put you back on the potter's wheel. And he'll shape you, mold you, mend you into something that he wants you to be. Somebody give God praise in this house. Yeah, I'm preaching now. The question is this, are you moldable? Are you moldable? Have you, when's the last time you've been broken? God said, when I see something on earth that is broken, I'll open heaven's wind and I'll bless it to you. Hallelujah. You've got to be broken in your life. You've got to cry out to the Lord. Like it's your last service day. What if you knew today was your last worship service? How would you worship Him? Are you so satisfied you're sitting down and you're content and you've got all you want? I'm telling you, there's more out there. I'm telling you, there's more of Jesus out there. And you've got to want it. You've got to desire it. You've got to be hungry for it. People will look at you and they'll call you Pentecostal and Charismatic and Pentabab, and all this, I declare today that we just rise up as a church of God and preach His name, preach the Bible, and let God once again be God over the churches. Hallelujah! We need a broken people, a broken church. And when you're broken, when you're broken, and you feel that you can't go on, I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life I said, the world's against me. Everybody talking. Nobody loves me. I knew God loved me. My wife loved me. I knew that was enough. But everybody wants to be loved. And I, there was a time in my ministry that I'm sitting there going, Lord, I don't know if I can take anymore. And that's when God will show up. And when you get broken, because if you're not broken, you're full of yourself. But when you break yourself, you get full of his self. So many people are full of themselves. They need to be broken vessels where God can mend them and put them back together. You need holy tears coming down your face once again for the lost in this world and the broken spirit in this world. The churches are not broken no more. They're really not. It's all about 
how many seats you have and how many lights you have. I'm telling you, when the Word of God, God says, go to the highways and the byways, compelling them to come to the, come to the house of worship. I'm telling you what God says, His Word will go forward, and it shall not return void. I'm declaring today that we need some good old preaching back in the house, and we need the Spirit of God back in the house, and you need to get over your bad self, and you need to let God rise up in yourself, and you need to be broken in this house where you crawl to the altar saying, God, i got to have you. Gotta have you, Lord. Lord, if you don't touch me, I can't walk. We have made so much about God. And hell corn, I'm telling you today, we must not get prideful for what God is doing in his church. Y'all listen to me. Listen to preachers' hearts this morning. Because if you get pride, if you get proudful, the fall will be next. You stay humble. You stay broken. You stay on your knees and just say, God, I want more. More fill me up, Holy Ghost. And when you stay like that, God can mold that kind of a person. Maybe if you've not felt God, it's because you've not been broken in a while. You've not been broken in a while. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. It's a tithe verse, but I want to read it to you because it's powerful. It says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, not the grocery store, not somebody who needs a, a fix a flat tire on the car. God says, you bring the tithe into the storehouse where you find the, the meat of the word. Listen to me. I didn't say this. God wrote this. He says, in this, test me. He said, prove me wrong. He says, you can't outgive me. There's a man in this congregation, he and his family. People ask me, Mr. Brian, how in the world did, did Elkhorn get out of debt? Number one, it's because God be for us. And number two, it's because you're, you're tithing. You're tithing. You're giving to God. And number three, it's because God got a hold of a family in this church. And he said, I want you to bless them with $25,000. I'm not joking about this because this is the real stuff. You say, Brian, really? Somebody wrote a $25,000 check, and here's what he said. I cannot outgive the Lord. I can't outgive him. I can't get enough of him. I want more of him. There's more coming. And you wait and see what God does to this man and this family. Watch this. This is good. This is more. See, listen to me, guys. Everything we need is attached to a soul. Everything we need in this house of worship, you've got it. I've got it. We've got it. You say, and see, y'all more worried about who the man is. That's how we work. Who is it, Brother Brian? Don't you ask me. Because I'm going to look at you and I'm going to tell you straight to your face, you missed the sermon. You missed it all. He, You're going to try to rob somebody of their blessing. Are you kidding me? Hallelujah. Watch this. God said these words, if you bring your tithe into the storehouse of church, there my food and my house may be. He says, test me, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows, open the windows of heaven for you. Everybody say for me. Come on, for me. Come on, you got to get this down in your spirit. For me. Watch what he says. I, Brian, he says, you tithe, you give that little 10%, and I will open the windows of heaven, and I will do this for you. For you. Y'all watch me. Y'all may not like teaching and preaching like this, but it's true. If you want to be blessed, listen to this word. I'll open the windows of heaven for you, and watch what he says, and pour down for you. For you, a blessing until there is room, not enough for you to receive it. For you to receive it. Watch this. God wants to bless you so much, you can't even hold it all. You can't even hold it all. And God gave it to me in the first service. I want to give it to you. He says your room is, is limited. 
but my windows of heaven are unlimited. You can build the biggest house and God will fill it up. You can build the biggest church and God will fill it up. How? Because with the tithe, the brokenness, and you give him back to God what he already has anyway. He says his word. Notice again, something on earth had to be broken and heaven opened up. Something on earth has to be broken and then heaven opened up. If you're not broken, <laughs> you'll, you'll be under a closed window. You'll be under a closed window. God spoke into my spirit, and I want you all to write this down if you take notes. And I want you to put a date beside it, because I know this is what the Lord spoke into me. He said, if they will, I will. Listen to me. If they will, I will. If, they, if, they'll, if they'll do it, if they'll be broken, I'll look from heaven, and I'll bless them. If they bring me their tithes, then I will do. I'll open the windows of heaven, and I'll pour my blessings out on them. Notice, if they will, he will. Watch this. How many of y'all want to open windows? You say, Brian, are you preaching prosperity again? Yep, I don't want to be broke. How about you? If you want to be broke, that you'll be broke. The mindset, the mentality that I believe the Word of God. God did not die. The streets are gold. There's not shacks up in heaven. There's mansions up in heaven. There's pearly gates and crystal seas, and there's food, so I know Baptists are going to be there. Y'all get that later. But what I'm telling you, God's not broke. There's, watch this. There's windows in heaven. There's windows in heaven. And God said, they're going, I want to bless you, but the only way the windows are going to open up is if you're broken. When you're broken, the windows open up, and God throws down blessings on you. Does that make sense? Y'all getting this word today? But if you're not broken, if you're not humble, I'm telling you right now, there's a closed window over your life. A closed window over your life. Why is God blessing Elkhorn? Because we're broken people. We love God's people. We're a humble church. And God says, because they're broken, I will open the window and I will pour blessings on them. And in three years, $350,000 came through this church. Why? Because we're broken. We're broken. We're broken. We're broken. Watch this. Your brokenness equals God's window of blessing. Write that down. Your brokenness equals God's window of blessing. Now watch this. Don't forget Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. See, we read verse 10. And pastors spank congregations with that one about the tithe. But watch, here's what, look what verse 11. God says, if you do this, the windows will be open. I will t- pour down my blessing. Your rooms won't even be able to contain. How many of y'all believe that? How many of y'all tithe? Two, three hands went down. That's all right. That's the way it is. At least they're honest. Because here's what I'm trying to tell you. You cannot outgive God. He loves you. He's crazy about you. And he wants to bless you. But if you are not being obedient, and if you're not broken, I promise you the window is closed. It's closed. Don't forget about verse 11. It says this. I'm on, I'm on stage. I hope I'm not boring you. God said, I will rebuke. Watch this. God said, I will rebuke. This is verse 11 after verse 10, where he says, you bring me the tithe. Watch what he says he'll do for, on your behalf. I will rebuke and devour the enemy for your name's sake. For your name's sake. He said, I'll bless you. I'll pour my, my blessings out on you. And oh, by the way, when the enemy comes at you, I will rebuke him. I will devour him. I will step on him. I will put him where he belongs. For your name's sake. For your name's sake. I can see Jesus now. I, I just, I don't know. I, just the way my mind works. It's scary, but it's the way it works. I'm your pastor, so don't shout me down while I'm preaching. I can, see, I can see now a broken people on earth. I can see Elkhorn on their knees just crying out to God, a broken people. Because watch this, we don't have all the answers. And you need to pray for your leadership. Because these next steps are very critical here at Elkhorn Baptist Church. So you need to be pleading the blood of God. Watch me, everybody watch me. 
plead the blood of God over your leadership. Pray for them. Bless them. And I promise you God will bless you. But I can see Jesus now. A broken people on earth opens the window. The blessings come down. And here's Satan. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I can see old Jesus stick his head through the window right now. I wish I had a big old window up here. I'd act like it this morning. Stuck his old head through the window. And he says, no, 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 no. That's my baby. That's my children. You can't touch them. I said bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. God said, I rebuke the old enemy. I devour the enemy for your name's sake. Do y'all realize who's fighting for you right now? Do y'all realize what's going on right now? If you could see the spiritual battle right now, you'd probably try to get under that blue chair. But God said, I'll be God beat MC Hammer. Can't touch this. I'm not going to dance. But I believe God saying, you can't touch them. You can't have them. You can't harm them. Why? Because I am blessing them. And when the hand of God is over your life, you can't touch them. The enemy can't have you. Are y'all getting this word today? I want y'all to get this word in your spirit. Don't listen to the voice of fear. I wrote this down. Elkhorn, you're not going under. You're going over. We're going over the threshold. We're going through the window. It'll never be the same. I hear people say all the time, I don't like big churches. You're going to have a problem in heaven. You're going to have a big problem in heaven. And I guarantee you won't be able to complain because God may zap you. He may thump you in the head and say, guess what? If you don't like you don't like a multitude, why would people say that when people are getting saved? Churches is growing like crazy, going, we don't went two services. And the first church is going to catch y'all if y'all not careful. That's why y'all got to fill the rest of your seats up. They're going to catch you. Y'all watch me. If you're not witnessing, the first service is going to catch you. And then you say, Brian, what are we going to do? We'll go three. Well, Brian, if that don't work, what are you going to do? We'll go four. Brian, if that don't work, what are you going to do? I don't know. We'll go five. We'll do whatever. Come on, church. Because why? We've got an open window of opportunity in front of us. And I listen to me. Don't listen to the voices of fear at the door. Don't listen to the voices of fear at the door. If I did that, I wouldn't be here today. Can't do it. You're too young. So I started preaching when I was 25. And here was a great theologian of the great church. Here was the best response. You're too young. You don't know what you're doing. So what you're telling me is the Holy Ghost don't know what He's doing inside of me. See, you got to know that religious talk. Because everybody's good at that religious thinking talk. But what God is looking for, what He's searching for, is brokenness. And people that were sitting say, I know it don't make sense. And I know people's going to laugh at me. And I know people ain't going to like me because I'm, I'm a virgin and I'm pure and I'm holy. And I'm going to wait till I have a ring on my finger. But blessed be the name of God. I'm, I'm blessed in this house. I'm waiting for my window of opportunity in my life. It don't make sense to a lost person. Why is the church listening to lost people? When they don't even have a relationship with the Lord. So many people come to that window and they're sitting there, and they're hearing the voices, and then they got a choice to make. Am I going to go through that window, or am I going to listen to the voice? So many churches, so many pastors are listening to the wrong voice. And I often wonder, with a lost man named Saul on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter 9, if a lost man heard Jesus Christ say, Oh, Saul, oh, Saul, while thou persecutest me. That's good King James language right there, by the way. A lost man heard the voice of God. A lost man heard the voice of God. Y'all getting this? How much more should a born-again, saved, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled man or woman of God hear the voice of God? Above all people, you should be hearing the voice of God. 
Well, God don't speak. I've never read that in the Bible. Oh, that's a great religious answer. But he still speaks. If he'll talk to a lost man and a lost man can hear him, how much more will he do for a born-again saved man? He'll do a exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ask or seek. Oh, I wish y'all would help the boy preach. Don't tell me that God don't work over 500 salvations since 2008. Hallelujah. Paid off this building that you're setting in in 10 months. In three years, they wanted to get it for 15, but blessed be the name of God. He said, no, I think I'll do it in three. And after three, the dead thing come to life. Hallelujah. Yeah, I said hallelujah. God be for us. Step over the threshold. Go through the wind of the day. Don't look back. Don't listen to the old voice of fear. Oh, come on, Elkhorn. You, he deserves a praise. He's been too good to us. Yeah, we ain't going to shut up. Nope. No. People on the radio say, boy, there are, y'all are a happy bunch of people. I'd much rather be happy than be sad. I've got a lot to be happy for. I woke up this morning. I've got clothes on my back. I've got a deep word of God, hallelujah, deep in my soul that's on fire today. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all missed it. Y'all think I'm kidding. That baby's already giving God praise. Look at her. We got babies in here out shouting adults today. She said, blessed be his name. Ah! Ah! That's like a Pentecostal. Oh. Hallelujah. I'm not worrying no more. I wrote this down. I'm not worrying no more. I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to grab it. I'm old heel grabber. I'm old angel wrestling preacher. I'm old devil stomping preacher. Old foot washing preacher. Thank you, Tom. That means a lot to you. Because I'm telling you why Pentecost worked. Because they was in one place, in one accord. They were broken. Oh, give me Jesus. I won't leave this upper room until I feel a fresh wind. Lord, I prophesy that very mighty in your name today. I'm not leaving this upper room until I feel a mighty rushing wind. I'm going to stay in this chair until the doors blow off the hinges. I'm going to stay in this blue seat until we build another church. I'm going to bless his name no matter what happens to me. Hallelujah. Fifty days in the upper room. What if they left on the 49? They would have missed their opportunity to change the world. 3,000 souls one day, 5,000 souls the next day. Listen to me. That would not have happened if they would have stayed still, stayed in their spot, and not went through the window of opportunity. Oh, by the way, y'all got me? I got you preaching. Give, give me two. Pray for me. I'll come out somewhere. I'll get down. Y'all know me well. If David had not went through his window of opportunity, first of all, he'd, he'd die. He said, if you don't do it now, there is no tomorrow. Elkhorn, y'all look at me. We're at an opportunity like never before. And I'm fired up about it. I'm shaking on the insides about it because I've never had this opportunity like I've got now. Yes, we're going to move slow, but yes, we're going to move fast. Yes, we're going to pray, but yes, we're going to move. Did y'all hear me? Yes, we're going to pray, but yes, we're going to move. Yes, we're going to pray, but yes, we're going to move. It's now or never. It's now or never. If David had not went through that window of opportunity, check this out. Jesus Christ is in the genealogy of David's bloodline. Have you ever thought about that? If he would have got killed, Jesus wouldn't have got born. You ever thought about that? It's through his bloodline. King David, bloodline of Jesus Christ. That's his bloodline. And 
watch this. Oh, I love the Lord. Hallelujah. What Satan is after is for you to stop the bloodline of Jesus Christ. He don't want you talking at work. He don't want you just talking at school. He wants you just to sit still, get comfortable, put your little temple scene in every once in a while. Blessed be his name. I'm good. My children are good. Everything's good. So then we think we don't have to worship. But then all of a sudden, tragedy happens. You have to get on your knees. You have a broken moment in your life. And then you find the power of God like never before. He's looking for broken people. He's looking for people that will get on their knees. So what y'all think about me no more? God, I need more. God, I'm not satisfied with just barely getting by. God, I, I want to be broken. Break me. God, you are the potter and I am the clay. Break me. Speak through me, God, like never before. God, pour out your blessings upon my family, my church family. Oh, God, give me a window to go through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for such a time as this. Thank you for this broken moment. Touch this church, God. Open that window. Break our hearts. And pour out your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, listen. God is not the one that opens the window. You are. When something on earth is broken, God opens the window. Y'all got this? Simple word, but profound word. God says, when I find broken people, broken you, that cry over people being lost and dying and going to hell, every, every minute, three people die. Every 60 seconds, three people die. Whether they go to heaven or hell, I don't know. But we can make a difference, El Corey. I know we have. I look at you. Some of you are just so on fire. Give me more. I gotta have more. I'll never be satisfied with just sitting in a blue chair and looking at a red stripe go up a, a board. I want to be a part of that. Oh, by the way, you don't want to miss next week. Because next week we're gonna unveil what the new church is gonna look like. You don't want to miss next week. Oh, come on. So in Jesus' name, guys, the reason why some of you can't be filled is because you're not broken. You're not broken. you got to be broken before the Lord so He can fill you up. That makes sense. Y'all got it? Y'all got the word today? I love my church. Why? This is what your pastor wrote. Because we love the Lord. We're a foot washing, ankle grabbing, angel wrestling, devil stomping, water walking, miracle working, soul winning, hey, gatekeeping, life changing church. That's why I love my church. That's why I love my church.